Okay, we're going to have an introduction to this cemetery, which is the Elmwood Cemetery. Started in 1730 has the Baptist Cemetery. The Baptist religion escaped from Springfield, and they came to the edge of the Northern Parish, which is called the Third Parish, or the Ireland Parish. And here, there were many settlers, and one of them was Elijah Ashley. He came here at a, at a very young age, and he came up from West Springfield, and he settled around the Ashley Reservoir, which is called the Ashley Pond in the beginning. By 1873, the Ashley Pond had become a reservoir belonging to Hoyle, and they had to, at some point, uh, buy up land as it came on the market, and Elijah Ashley came on the market. But before that, since he was the first settler who were already there, people were calling it Ashley Pond. Right? So this, this is the person that that pond is named after. Now I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the key features of this cemetery. So what we're going to do, in this corner right here, which is the northwest corner, you see a lot of very old stones, and the older stones tend to be towards the front and a lot of them towards the middle. In there, there happens to be Reverend Rand who started up the first church. That's fine. Oh. In this corner, Reverend Rand is buried. He started up the first church, which was the Baptist church. Church, which, which together was with the Congregational Church. The church happened to be right across the street from this Baptist cemetery. Now, the Baptists liked to get away from persecution by the Congregationalists. They didn't like their way of doing things, and so they would very often go across borders of town to start their own congregation, which would become another town by the end. So, well, it started out as a Baptist town. The first Baptist church was the first meeting house, our church within the cemetery. All right, now around the cemeteries, this is a rectangular cemetery, there's going to be many things. There's the Eyes family over in the middle. Towards the middle over there, there's many Revolutionary War veterans. I think I counted up once that there's 19 of them buried in the cemetery that fought in the Revolutionary War. Right. There's also in the far corner down this way, the Day family is buried, and the Day family had two boys who were killed during the Revolutionary War. And they were truly boys, they were younger than 18 years old, and they died for their country. And when we have that stop, I'll give you a complete story. Eunice, Eunice Day, their mother, uh, became the namesake of the Daughters of the American Revolutionary chapter in the Holyoke uh, section. So the Day family was very important and we're going to see in this introduction another Day family who started up a ferry. In the far southeast corner there is a gravestone there for Bushman Fuller and what he did, he was the first African American in Holyoke and he got buried in this cemetery, but we'll see that he wasn't buried in sequence. He was buried in a corner because he was an African American, so he wasn't allowed to be buried with a white person, even though he's very respected. In the back, the last corner, which is the northeast corner, you, you can go down there. There's a lot of modern burials there, but also you'll see there's another cemetery back there, which is the Calvary Cemetery. And the Calvary Cemetery started in the 18, about 1883 or so. And they bought land up here, and it actually brackets towards the back of this Elmwood Cemetery and also towards the north, so it brackets a cemetery. So we're going to see one more stop as we walk right up here. Okay, there's a sequence of stones right in front of us, and this stone says Jedediah Day died December 26, 1839, 
age 85, and his wife Phoebe. And the children, I believe, are the four stones in front of this. What this is, or who this says, Jedediah was one of the Day family. His mother was Eunice Day. But what he did was he ran the ferry that was at Springdale Park. And that was one of five ferries within the borders of what would become Holyoke. He, he didn't run it while it was Holyoke, so he died earlier than that. But he was one of five ferries. Since there were no bridges yet, there were only ferries. And not, a, not only did he run the ferry, he also lived down there. And they very often named Brooks after the last family before that brook enters into a major river or stream. And it just so happened his ferry and his house were down there. And so the major brook became named the Daybrook and it ran into the Connecticut River. <coughs> Nowadays, the Daybrook is entirely underground because it's the most da dangerous brook in oil. It starts up on Crafts Hill and there it's above ground. But once it leaves the park, community park, they put it in tunnels and pipes below ground. And so now it's hardly visible to people at all. And a lot of people don't know where it is. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the cemetery and that you'll go on all the stops, which are many, and especially go to the Major League Day stop. Thank you.